Thank you. The next speaker is uh, Chief Matt Clark. Mr. Chair and uh, committee members, uh, once again, I just want to say that uh, representing the U University of Minnesota Police Department, I support Chief Harto's reappointment. Uh, like the Minneapolis Fire Department, we need the Minneapolis Police Department and their partnership, <coughs> and Chief Harto is very effective in leading that partnership and ensuring that we have that at the university. Uh, one short, uh, small fact I'll give you is that we have 52,000 students. That's the sixth largest campus enrollment in the nation, and many of those students live in neighborhoods surrounding the campus. Without her community policing focus, without her collaboration and responsiveness, we wouldn't be able to do what we need to do on and off campus to keep those students safe. I know that uh, you have lots of facts and evidence to go over uh, and reports that you received from the police department uh, concerning their effectiveness and what they're working on. I know because you've given me those staff assignments and, and uh, I've had to carry those out. So I won't go over the facts. Um, I, I think you have plenty of those. Uh, what has been achieved by the Minneapolis Police Department under Chief Arto? But I will talk to her skills and her character. First, I know that she's a leader, not only locally, but nationally. And that national leadership uh, is reflective on what she does at the MPD and within the city. And it's a, a, a very much a important part of her focus. I know she thinks globally, but she's also very in tune to what's going on in the communities and she acts on a very community-based level. I know she believes in balancing public safety and constitutional rights, and it's a very tough balance, but she does it very effectively. And she also believes that she has to stay attuned to current events, but also what each individual community needs within the city of Minneapolis. Another item that I think is a great skill of hers is she takes a lot of criticism, more than I can think of, of any political leader in the city a great deal of it. And I've seen from the front row that she doesn't lose faith in what she wants to do and what she wants to accomplish. You talked a lot about reform, talked a lot about current events. She has not lost faith in where she wants to go with this police department and what she wants to get done. And finally, I think what's most important is behind closed doors, because I've been there, what she says behind closed doors is what she says publicly. And that's how she acts. If you're looking for additional changes to the police department, if you're looking for things you need to get done or if current events change, when the chief says she's gonna get that done, she will do it and she'll be effective at doing that. Thank you. Um, the next speaker is uh, Chief John Harrington. Mr. Council, my name is John Harrington. I'm Chief of Police for Metro Transit. Uh, three years ago, uh, when Chief Hartog came in, uh, she was my first stop <laughs> as a new chief for Metro Transit. <laughs> Uh, I teach community policing all over the country, and I can tell you that there are three components to good community policing. There's partnerships, there's organizational change, and there's problem solving. And I can tell you that the Minneapolis Police Department, under Chief Hartoll's watch, has done all three at an outstanding level. I have watched the partnerships develop between my department and her department, and I've watched crime drop uh, through the transit system, and in areas that, frankly, uh, where it was really more on my watch than it was in Minneapolis's. I have never seen her or her staff shirk from uh, stepping forward and taking the heavy load when we've needed to, whether that was special events, whether that was downtown the warehouse district, whether that was in Lake Street. Uh, every time we've needed a partner, I have not had to look very far other than simply look over to Chief Hartzell and know that I'm going to have that. Organizational change is, a, is, a, is, is a, a really tough thing to do in police departments. We're departments that were created to, create, to keep the status quo, quite frankly, historically. That was what police departments were created to do. Uh, and so when you come in as a change agent in a police department, uh, you know you're fucking the tide. You know that you're going to be facing a strong historical and cultural opposition. And yet what I've seen from Chief Harto is with MPD 2.0, um, recently attended one of her graduations and was just overwhelmed by the sentiment of creating a department full of guardians. Uh, in a world where oftentimes police officers are trained and, and positioned to be the warriors, um, 
What she is talking about is old-fashioned community police and good beat work, where what you really want are officers that are guardians of the public safety and guardians of the Constitution. Finally, in problem solving, uh, once again, I think that the facts speak for themselves. Crime is down. Property crimes are down. Uh, in mo many communities, violent crime is down. Uh, and what we've seen through that is her ability to work collaboratively in creating good problem-solving projects. Uh, the Somali Police Project that we recently embarked on at, uh, at MP MTPD um, couldn't have happened if, without the support of Chief Harto, her staff, uh, and frankly, um, as I told, recently talked to the Chief of Police from Somalia, uh, what happens in Somalia, the things that are good that are happening in Somalia are oftentimes reflective of the good things that are happening here. I am very strongly in support of Chief Harto's reappointment, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. The next speaker is Shane Zahn. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee members. I'm Shane Zahn with the Minneapolis Downtown Improvement District. I'm here to support Chief Harto's reappointment. Um, I was enrolled with Target Corporation on a Safe City initiative back in 2007 uh, to help on public and private safety strategies. Little did I know what I was getting into. I didn't know much about community policing. Um, but I'll tell you what, I've learned so much from Chief, Chief Harto on what public and private collaboration efforts are. Whether it's youth violence prevention strategies or uh, looking at livability issues, Chief Harto has been there as an inspector, as a chief. Um, she has pulled community members. I've learned so much from her. Um, we've had a lot of accomplishments downtown, and a lot of that infrastructure is because of her leadership and her commitment. Um, I'm here again to know that we have a lot of work to do and Chief Harto is the right person to get it done. Um, I've been there uh, for no, close to eight years with Chief Harto and different strategies that we have. And I'm very honored when we have police departments throughout the country that come visit us here in Minneapolis to see what we do uh, on public safety. And one of the biggest things I take away is look at our public and private collaboration efforts that we have in our city, bar none. I think it's some of the best we have in the country. So thank you. The next speaker is Gwyn Gunter. Okay. All right. Then uh, following that, it's Michelle Gross. Community members and Chair Yang, um, thank you again for allowing me to speak. I did want to mention something that I failed to mention the first time, which is to thank you for continuing this hearing um, to the next um, committee of the whole meeting. I would have rather have been uh, continued to the next um, public safety committee meeting, but you know this is a good compromise, and at least it does give people a week's opportunity to come here and to be prepared and to give you you know good good comments that are hopefully beneficial to you. So thank you for that. I do appreciate that. Um, Again, with um, with uh, Chief Harto, our, I, I do want to say this. Um, our organization is not actually opposed to the reappointment of the chief. And in fact, it seems that it's a foregone conclusion that it will happen. Um, but again, as before, you don't have to always do approvals as just up or down votes. You can ask for things. And one of the things that we have a great concern about is, again, the OPCR. Um, it, um, Ms. Corbel is one piece of that equation, but Chief Harto is the other piece of the equation. It's a tag team. Um, you know, I recognize that Chief Harto has terminated some employees who were engaged in misconduct in, say, a drunk driving incident in Wisconsin that was reported by a police officer, things like that. But we still have not seen any discipline of police that is reflective of community complaints. I also want to raise the issue of the handling of the 4th Precinct um, encampment, as well as the handling of the um, Terrence Franklin and um, Jamar Clark cases. Both of these are problematic cases. They're cases that capture the, the um, visions of the community, of the imaginations of the community, and have been greatly uh, been of great concern. We have seen little to no transparency in either one of those cases. Um, we're not particularly encouraged by the fact that the, that, there being, that the one case was investigated, the Clark case, by the BCA, because we don't have a lot of faith in them either. But um, there has been little to no transparency, and the, uh, the handling at the 4th Precinct was frankly atrocious. I recognize that that is not all um, uh, on Chief Harto. I recognize that some of this most surely came from um, the city's executive. But nonetheless, um, the kind of you know rapid shutdown of the encampment, the pointing guns at people, including some members on this council, um, the uh, you know walling up of the fourth precinct. Uh, at one night, I was there, for example, and um, some young 
kids basically were playing on the side on a, in a lot in an ab abandoned lot on the side street and police went into the back parking lot of the of the fourth precinct and held guns on those kids and these kids were not doing anything that threatened the police in any way this is appalling conduct i took a number of witness statements um this is again appalling conduct you know we haven't seen um a real transparency and we haven't seen any transparency around the treatment of police in the community after the jamar clark shooting uh, which was equal equally appalling um in which they went in and uh, stole cell phones from people told people you better not tell what you saw here or the same thing's going to happen to you this kind of stuff there's been no investigation of this whatsoever and um, referring all these people for coaching and counseling is not going to get it we need real you know consequences for bad behavior and then that way we can build some trust with the community thank you thank you um, <clears throat> the next speaker is Dominic Boza thank you mr. chair uh, Madam President, good to see you, uh, Council Members, uh, uh, Ms. Mayor. My name is Dominic Boza. I live at 4215 Portland South. Uh, I work in downtown Minneapolis for a large homeless shelter. Uh, I am in support of uh, Janae Harto's uh, reappointment. Uh, I've known her uh, since uh, 1995 uh, when our city was dubbed Murderapolis uh, and the horrors that we were seeing back then. Uh, citizen on citizen. Uh, obviously, things have gotten better in that way, but there's certainly a long way to go. I wanted to say two things uh, that I know about uh, Janae. Uh, the first is, uh, for 17 years, uh, and that's, this is after working with her in Chicago and Franklin, uh, I've been looking for trying to get some sort of avenue to get better, re uh, better result for the homeless and the poor who are arrested for m uh, misdemeanors and small crime uh, instead of just sticking them in jail running through the system uh, and just going and going through that over and over again and not addressing chemical dependency or mental health issues. Uh, with her support in 2009, along with prosecution, uh, the city prosecutors, we were able to come together as a community. And I think that's the only way we're going to succeed at anything we do around here is if we, if we do this all together. Uh, it brought in uh, uh, social service agencies, brought in the police, prosecution, uh, probation. And together, we were able to come up with solutions on an individual basis, the majority of whom were African American, uh, uh, and saw a, a great change in their lives. Uh, I've, been, I've done, I've studied a lot of experiments dealing with sanctions on recidivism, and typically, and this is the case today as it was when I was uh, doing this uh, 10 years ago, is that if you have any program, if you have a 10% return on your dollar, you're doing excellent. With the, with the downtown core watch and the support of the Minneapolis Police Department, we're seeing a 70% reduction in the crimes that these guys are committing over a six-year period. Dramatic. Real change. Real good. Uh, the other thing was, and this is where I'll get probably some booze, <laughs> is uh, uh, not only uh, uh, was my father the one who commissioned the 4th Precinct, uh, I appreciated the way uh, uh, that the chief handled, handled that in the end. Uh, I, I was up there. Uh, to me, it was an occupational army. Uh, 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 I think there were there were certain, I mean, the, regardless of the issues which need to be addressed, not necessarily by the police department, probably should be more directed to the legislature, but I, I thought uh, that the right thing to do was to minimize injury uh, and, and, and the way the operation was eliminated in the middle of the night, eliminated uh, those injuries to anybody who could have been hurt in the way. And I wanted to say that the, the, the chief is responsible for protecting life and property, uh, and in that case, I think said she did uh, do that. So I just want to thank you for your time. Thank you. The next speaker is Dave Bicking. Hi, I'm Dave Bicking, 4200 Cedar Avenue, Minneapolis. Again, I would like to reserve the substance of my comments for next week. Um, I think um, with this um, poor notice of this hearing, the damage to credibility of this um, committee and the executive committee has already been done. Um, it's uh, tone deaf considering that it comes just two months after hundreds of people were protesting and many of them were calling for the resignation or firing of the chief. Under those conditions, you should at least give the kind of notice that you have in the past. By continuing for just one week with this unusual and unnecessary haste, there is also the unusual situation where the Public Safety Committee is giving up its duty to consider, debate, discuss, and actually vote on these appointments, which are one of your most important roles as a committee. You have just deferred this because there seems to be that much haste that it can't be put off for two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. 
The next speaker is Adriana Cirillo. Good afternoon. I have to say that I get very nervous speaking in public, so bear with me. I'm actually, uh, I serve with the Pon uh, Police Conduct Oversight Commission, and uh, I've been serving in that commission for the last year. And I have to say just one thing. This last year has been a learning experience for me, going from robber's rules and all the procedures, you know, that we have to learn to be effective. So it has been a great opportunity for me to serve in that commission. But um, I do feel that uh, we haven't really have a voice at the table. We haven't really been able to communicate very well with the leaders. I am not in here to support or not support the chief's uh, reappointment. I think she has done an incredible job, but we have a long way to go. And one of the duties that we have as a commission is that uh, we must um, contribute to the performance review of the chief, and we have not done so. So when you talk about credibility, building better relationships with the community, as a commissioner, I have the responsibility to say that we have done everything that we have been given within the limited power to do so. And we have fallen short. We haven't really have had the support of the um, people that created this body. And I'm not in here to point fingers. I mean, here to say that we have a great opportunity to bring through transparency as a commission, as a body, we must have a dialogue. And um, I just feel that uh, it's just, uh, I don't feel comfortable saying that I support her reappointment right now if we have not provided the performance review as a commissioner. That's my position. And we have a long way to go. And I do apologize for not reaching out to each one of you. Like I said, it was a learning experience for me. I feel like we were just, you know, thrown in there in a way <laughs> with good intentions. However, the <laughs> unintended consequences uh, are like the killing of Jamar Park and the frictions that we do have in our uh, community. I serve in the Community Outreach Committee, and we have a, mapped out a great plan to come to the different precincts, to build relationships with inspectors, with the city council members that are in that area from each different precinct, so that we can move forward together. But um, we must do it, and that's all I have to say. Thank you for your work and everything that you do, but uh, if we created, or if whomever created this body, uh, we cannot ignore it. So where are we as representatives of a democracy if we don't follow through? Thank you. Our next speaker is Dr. Heather Husby. <clears throat> Mayor and Chair and Council Members, um, I'm Heather Hughesby. I'm Executive Director of YouthLink, and um, YouthLink serves over 2,000 homeless youth in our Twin City, in Minneapolis. Um, I've known Chief Harto for about nine years in several capacities, um, both when she was in the precinct, but also um, as she's been the police chief. Um, she has also served in our our board at YouthLink and also in our advisory committee at YouthLink. So I've known her and I'm speaking in those capacities. Um, I think that as I represent YouthLink, I'm really just representing an agency that's really at the grassroots, an agency that's trying to make a change with some really key youth. And I always believe that if we can crack um, the code, I think, with these young people who are some of the most vulnerable young people in our Twin Cities, in our, in our, in our Minneapolis, that we really have made a difference in their lives. When um, Chief Hartwell was first appointed, I said that she was a, I considered her to be a foot soldier in the campaign for change, and I still believe that. But I think that change, we have to understand, is inevitable. Change is hard. Change is um, constant. And change is a process. And I think that we're in that, really, that stage of change that has to continue. When we look at the young people that I serve, the young people that I serve are at a crossroads. They're 16 to 24. These are young people that I think that's where change starts in our community. If we can make a difference with these young people, they're our future. They've got three pathways that these young people can take. 
They can either take a pathway to new opportunities and we can show them those opportunities, but we also have to show them that they have their rights and that they can live those opportunities. Um, they can either go though that opportunity, they can go the opportunity of, they can go the pathway of prison or law enforcement or be, be, be arrested, or they can go the opportunity, which is not an opportunity of death. And these young people are experiencing <laughs> homelessness. I know the mayor talks about, I heard um, today uh, someone saying, or yesterday in the, um, that she leaves no genius on the table. I've told her before, we're not gonna leave any youth homeless on the streets. Um, may, the chief of police um, has worked with us to build trusting adult, rela trusting relationships with our youth. We have a lot of work still to do. I had a youth tell me that's working on street outreach downtown Minneapolis, that for the first time, they're able to walk by the police and have some trust with the police and that is building a relationship that she has been willing to commit to through her advisory committees with the youth, through her coming over to the to YouthLink. Um, and she does that with us in problem solving. The youth are willing to, for me to call her. Rondo is coming over. We're able to have trusting relationships and problem solving. I really, really encourage you, we're at an action stage with the police chief to continue her appointment <coughs> Um, this is really critical. We're at a critical stage for change with our young people. We have 150 youth every day over there at YouthLink, and it's critical that we continue with her tenure. I thank you for this. It's a critical time to reappoint her. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next speaker is Lisa Delgado. Thank you very much. My name is Lisa Neal Delgado. I live at 1210 James Avenue North, 55411. And I'll say that again, 55411. I live in a zip code that has probably seen the most abuses, most atrocities, most, um, and I, I just can't explain it. I've been, that's been my house all my life, um, born and raised there. Um, so like Mr. Edwards, and I don't have quite the years that he has. I've seen a lot of chiefs come and go in Minneapolis. I've, there's probably one that I could say, other than Chief Hartog, that I would support for reemployment. But you guys screwed that up maybe about six or seven years ago um, when you let Chief McManus go. So what I will say is this. I can echo Lisa Clemens' statement as far as the chief opening up her office to the Department of Justice. I come from 20 years of the military service, and the commander, when they take charge of a new unit, the first thing they do is they go to the inspector general and they say, come in and take a look at my command. Tell me what I need to fix. Tell me what's going right. Tell me what's going wrong. And that's what Chief Hartog did with her department. She got her department in a mess um, because there was a chief there that was allowed to stay way too long. I'm extremely vocal when it comes to police misconduct because I've seen it all. And I know how officers should conduct themselves, not all officers. I'm not gonna say that Chief Hartog hasn't made any mistakes when the forward operating base went up in front of the fourth precinct right after the occupation. I was appalled, I was assaulted, insulted, and I was offended. But I still reached out to the chief to say, we've got to do better. I'm on one of her committees, um, the Community Engagement Committee, um, and I was real shocked when members reached out to me and said they needed my type of vocal. Um, they needed my type of voice on the committee. I was extremely shocked because I am very critical of the police department. And for as critical as I am a police department, it's not necessary anything that's within the chief's control. You have an out of control union that represents and helps retain aggressive and abusive officers. You have uh, policies in place that protect those officers when it comes to the misconduct and the community wants transparency. If the community wants transparency, they can't, get, they can't find information out because of that data privacy acts and all of that is off, not in the control of the police department. There's a lot of processes in place. I think Chief Hartog, is off to a good start. I think she has a long way to go. And I think that there's probably not a chief that you can bring in to replace her that is gonna be as aggressive in doing the things that she's done so far to make the changes that need to be made 
um, as far as police reform, especially when it comes to my community. Thank you. The next speaker is Don Samuels. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's uh, uh, great to be back to support Chief Harto and uh, for uh, reappointment. I, I also live in 55411, so I know what it feels like to be um, to be to ex to watch and experience um, harsh policing. And um, I, I came down to City Hall my very first time was to talk to Chief Olson about those issues before I was even thinking about politics. <laughs> so I know what it, it's like to be there. I know what it's like to be here as chair of the Public Safety Committee and uh, to sit with the mayor every two weeks to talk about to the chief about who's going to be the next chief. And um, out of those conversations and the, the vision that we had for policing in the city, the appointment was uh, the appointment of Chief Harto was made because we felt that she was a chief for the 21st century, that she was thoroughly creative, uh, receptive, community oriented. She was brilliant. She was collaborative. I have, uh, in my position as chair of a couple of committees, reviewed a lot of the performance of a lot of uh, uh, heads of departments. And I don't think this is violating any Data Practices Act to say. I've never seen the kind of support for a department head in my entire 11 years here that I saw for Chief Harto from her peers in 360 reviews. And, uh, and when you combine that with, that with the fact that I've never seen such an outpouring of support from the community when she was appointed, that this room was full of people singing her praises about her policing and uh, community policing posture. It was impressive. And she has brought that into reality. Um, you know, the Jamar Clark thing happened, happens all over the country. Um, it, uh, uh, you, you heard uh, former chiefs of St. Paul talk about the basic function of police is to support and maintain the status quo, which is then interpreted as often as justice, and often it's not. And so to have a chief who's trying to transform the irregularities is very impressive. To have a chief who will call up on NPR and challenge the head of the union publicly, who is advocating for harsher reactions to the community, who is voicing their, that is voicing their, their First Amendment rights, to do it stridently and articulately, I think is the kind of chief we have and with the kind of chief we want, who will multiply the bike patrols and foot patrols. We've never had that. And um, I encourage you to stay with this chief so that we can continue and expand upon this great work of relating to our community in a new and firm way. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sandra Patterson. Hello, Council, um, President Johnson, Chair Yang, Mayor Hodges. Thank you for having this conversation today. I'm here in support. I live in area code uh, 55412, and I'm here in support of the reappointment of Chief Harto. Each day when I leave my home, I measure the pulse of the city, and when I leave, I feel more safe than I did in the past. I also want to talk about her leadership. What I've observed is she's been there, she has open doors, uh, she's intelligent, um, she's no nonsense, she uh, speaks her mind and uh, she's, uh, she means what she says and she says what she means. I feel safer, and I'm also here 
to talk about the legacy that my father, who was a police officer for the Minneapolis Police Department in the 80s, uh, Raymond Presley, 70s and 80s, and one of his goals was to increase the uh, amount of uh, minorities on the Minneapolis Police Department. And I feel that uh, Chief Hartall represents uh, women, minorities. Uh, I also feel like she does an excellent job. I have all of the um, confidence in her to take this uh, department to the next level. One thing I am disappointed in is that we have to go through this every two years. I think that the police chief's tenure should be longer than that so that they can really root themselves. I'm going to read a letter. Uh, dated uh, January 16, 1973, from the Minneapolis Police Department, Gordon M. Johnson. It is my pleasure and privilege to recommend Officer Raymond Presley for an award of valor. The facts are as follows. On January 15, 1973, at approximately 20, 20 hours, Officer Presley, myself, Deputy Chief Elmer Norland, and Lieutenant Jake McCarthy was attending a community relations meeting at 1108 West Broadway. We were informed that two police officers had been shot while answering a call at 1516 Russell Avenue North. When Officer Presley and I arrived at the scene, we found the house surrounded with the suspect still inside. A successful attempt to contact the suspect was made and when learning the suspect's identity, Officer Presley informed me that he knew 